One of the biggest unknowns in the economy right now is what will happen to the U.S. consumer in 2024 as they try to navigate everything that the Fed has done as pertains to interest rates. Who better to ask what will happen to the consumer than Goldman Sachs chief economist Jan Hatzius. Jan, thanks for taking some time. Very busy uh, tech conference here. And you are out of the shoot with two big notes here uh, today. First, lowering your recession odds to 15 percent from 20 percent. Why? Why now with that move? Basically because of continued improvement in the indicators of rebalancing. So the economy has continued to be pretty resilient. We're growing at 2% plus. We think that's going to be true in 2024 as well. Income growth looks supportive. Job growth is still pretty, pretty significant. And at the same time, the labor market has gotten more rebalanced. Job openings have come down. Quits have come down. Wage growth decelerated. You saw that in Friday's numbers in the, in the employment report. And inflation has, uh, has come down. So I think there's increased evidence that we can see rebalancing of the economy, inflation coming under control, and it's not going to require a recession. So we've progressively reduced our recession probability. We had it in the 30%, 35% range around March when you had the, uh, the, the financial turbulence and the, the banking turbulence. Um, always thought that it was less likely than 50%, but I've gotten incrementally more confident that uh, recession can be avoided. Does this quantify as a soft landing for the economy? Yes. In fact, the note that I published yesterday, um, I titled it Soft Landing Summer because the, uh, the evidence that has accumulated, especially over the last few months, is very much consistent with uh, soft landing. A lot of folks that have been reading this note and consuming it on the Yahoo Finance platform seem to be asking this question. What's the impact of the Federal Reserve's rate hikes? Uh, doesn't that hurt growth at some point? Well, I think it has hurt growth. They've hiked the funds rate by 525 basis points. That did reduce growth in the past year, we think, to the tune of uh, you know, as much as one and a half to two percentage points in the second half of last year. But the lags of monetary policy, according to our analysis, are relatively short. And the biggest impact of this uh, of, of, of these rate increases now is behind us. And we can see that, for example, in our financial conditions index, which actually has been easing on net since the October of last year. That's, that's, that's almost a year of net easing. So if financial conditions are easing, it's sort of hard to say that monetary policy is having a large negative impact on growth right this minute. We think it's diminishing and we think the impact is going to continue to diminish, assuming that we're now either at the end of the rate hikes or almost at the end of the rate hikes. And we think we're actually at the end of the rate. So you... Are, so you're not in the, are you in the camp where no more rate hikes at the next Fed meeting? They're, they're done for this cycle. Next uh, Fed meeting in a couple of weeks, highly unlikely that they hike. I think that's already been pretty clearly signaled. Beyond that, I think it's possible that you get another hike, but it's not our expectation. Would a part of that hike be a function of we're now seeing oil prices back to $90 a barrel. We're seeing food prices as a result pick back up in many places. How concerned are you about this disinflationary narrative becoming inflationary again next year? Well, I think headline inflation, of course, depends to a significant degree on what happens to commodity prices. So increases in commodity prices will be visible in terms of headline inflation. The real concern, though, from the Fed's perspective has been core inflation, underlying inflation getting entrenched in the economy. And I think there the news flow has been very positive. It's been positive in terms of the core inflation indices. It's been positive in terms of the labor market rebalancing. It's been positive in terms of supply chain disruptions disappearing. So none of that is really being called into question by the commodity price rebound. Although, of course, commodity prices matter for headline. How tough will it be for the U.S. economy to withstand the restart of student loan payments? And, and where do you fall in that debate? We do think that that's going to be, you know, a modest drag on growth in the in the in the fourth quarter, maybe in the in the fir first quarter. 
it's going to take a few tenths off of uh, the increase in real consumer spending. We do think that Q3, where we're estimating almost 3% quarter-on-quarter growth, and other estimates are, are even higher than that, that's probably going to be sort of a local high. Fourth quarter, we think, is going to be lower than that, you know, maybe closer to 1% than, than to 2%. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be uh, a long-lasting or deep slowdown. We think it's going to be, uh, you know, in the end, uh, something that keeps us at a trend or slightly below trend pace. But in 2024, we expect a reacceleration to about 2 the other note you wrote, uh, you wrote that U.S. consumers will likely outperform in 2024. And I think that might be the contrarian view on the street, depending who you, who you talk to. Why are you so confident in the consumer here? We have seen a lot of retailers, Macy's, you name it, warn about rising delinquencies and people not being able to pay their bills. I mean, at a macro level, if there was only one indicator that I could know regarding the consumer, it would be real disposable household income. And that has been growing at a 4% pace in 2023. We think 2024 is going to be a little weaker, but we're still expecting about 3% real disposable household income growth. If that's right, or even if that's anywhere close to right, then it's very difficult to see declines in real consumer spending. And uh, in fact, we're expecting continued moderate growth. Now, that's at the most macro level. Of course, you can drill down into the different income groups, the different types of households, the demographics. And I would agree that probably a bit more of that growth is going to be towards the top end of the income distribution. And the bottom end of the income distribution, I would expect to be somewhat softer. Uh, and I think that would be consistent also with some of the things that we've seen on delinquencies uh, among lower income consumers. That said, we're still expecting income to grow for, for lower end consumers. We expect real wages to grow, and we don't think that there will be a large deterioration, but incrementally, it's probably going to be a little bit softer than in the macro numbers. Within your outlook for next year, in terms of monthly job creation, are we still over 100,000 jobs created each month? And where do you see the unemployment rate going? In the next year, we still think 100,000 or a little bit more than 100,000. There is a deceleration in job growth. Job growth is normalizing from the really outsized rates that we saw coming out of the pandemic. Uh, but, but yeah, we think it's going to be a gentle decline. Again, this is going to, of course, depend on how the overall economy does. What happens to GDP? If GDP grows, you know, 2% or so next year, then... I think you can be pretty confident that we'll also continue to create a decent number of jobs, 100,000, 125,000, 150,000. Um, and I think there are good reasons, including the, the income point I just made, to expect that that, that growth is uh, still reasonable. In terms of unemployment rate, we're expecting more of the same, meaning uh, about 3.5%, we're at 3.6% for the end of Next year, we saw a 0.3 percentage point increase in the unemployment rate in August in Friday's employment report. However, that was entirely driven by an increase in labor supply, so it's not a concern. I normally, if you'd ask me if you saw a 0.3 percentage point increase in the unemployment rate, I might say it's a little concerning. But if you dig into the details and look at layoffs, still very low, but increases in the labor supply, uh, it, you know, that, that is something that is, uh, I think, reassuring. So no, no real change. We've been in the sub-4% range for unemployment since early 2022, and we still expect to be there next. Uh, Jan Hatius, uh, Chief Economist at Goldman Sachs, always great to get some time at this conference, and uh, always a pleasure to read your team's research, uh, some of the best in the game. Thank you so much. Wonderful to be here.